Well, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I want to welcome you out tonight to the Whitfield Harrington Show. This is a show where we take a look at things that are going on in our natural world, and we try to see things through a set of spiritual lenses. So as always, let me begin with a prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you now for this moment, this privilege, and this opportunity to be able to speak by way of radio and by way of internet. Father, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart would be acceptable in your sight. May the words that I speak be seasoned with grace. May they find good soil in the hearts of men, and may they bring forth great fruit that is pleasing unto you, Father. These things we thank you for now as I cover myself with the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Well, I'm here again next week, um, this week, not next week, but I'm here again this week, amen. Um, thankful to the Lord for what the Lord reveals and what the Lord does um, in the midst of things that are going on in the world. Um, a few weeks ago, I mentioned um, and posted a video on YouTube. The title of the video was Russia and China are cooking something. Um, and as we can see now that Russia has served up what it's been cooking. Uh, but I think what's interesting is to point out something is that the title of the video was Russia and China. It's cooking something. So although the Chinese are kind of hiding their hands at the moment, there's still something cooking underneath the surface with them as well. Um, if you haven't heard, and I'm certain that almost everybody that has a television or some form of telecommunications know that Russia invaded Ukraine. Um, and this has been something that the Lord has kind of been showing me for quite some time now. Um, and there is a need to pray for the people of Ukraine. There's a need to pray for the people of the world as well. Um, there's a need to intercede um, like more than ever before now in this time that we're living in. So one of the things that I, I think it's important to point out something is the dates uh, that a lot of these things happen. Um, a few years ago, Russia invaded and annexed Crimea, if I'm pronouncing it right. What's interesting is they did that on the 20th of February. It's interesting that they decided to invade Ukraine on the 23rd of February. It's interesting how things are happening around the same time. At the beginning of the year, the Lord gave me a word um, concerning the gates of time um, and being guardians of the gates of time. And what do I mean by guardians of the gates of time? When you look at a minute, or even a second. One minute opens up and another minute closes. So if it's nine o'clock now, nine o'clock is the gate to 10 o'clock. It opens up to 10 o'clock and 10 o'clock closes the gate to nine o'clock. Monday um, is the gate that takes us into Tuesday and so and so on. January takes you into February. February takes you into March. So there are physical gates as well as time gates. And then there are measurements of time um, that we have to be sensitive of. And the Lord began to share something with me that he had revealed to me a couple of years ago, and I began to share it in a message concerning the gates of time. When you take a look at what we have in our world as far as the measurements of time, you know, we have seconds, we have minutes, we have hours, we have days, we have weeks, we have months, we have years. You can even go into decades and centuries and millenniums and so and so on. And those measurements of time, as insignificant as they may seem sometimes, one moment has the capacity or one unguarded moment has the capacity um, to produce deadly consequences. So it's important to understand that just because it's a minute, it's a second. How long does it take a person to lose control of a vehicle on the road? Just a few moments. So when you look at it, um, a second 
as we say here in the United States, is a base measurement for the unit of time. And then you have 60 seconds in a minute, 60 minutes in one hour, 24 hours in one day, seven days in one week, 52 weeks in a year, 12 months in a year, and 365 days in a year. Now, I want you to pay attention to something real close here tonight, all right? There are 52 weeks in a year. Okay, 52 weeks in a year, and there are seven days in a week. So there are seven weeks, seven days, that happens 52 times. And the Lord began to show me something. If you take the 1st of January, all right, and you simply use it as the anniversary date or the new date for which a, um, a year begins, and you subtract just one, you just take the first day of the year, that gives you 365 minus one equals 364. If you take the number seven and you divide it into 364, it gives you 52. 52 days, just like they're 52 weeks, okay? So there are seven segments or seven phases of the year that all consist of 52 days, all right? So let me break this down for you. Follow me on this. If you just say on January the 1st and then you move, start counting on the 2nd. If you go from January the 2nd to February the 22nd, that gives you the first phase of the year. Then from February the 23rd to April the 15th, that gives you the second phase of the year. Then April the 16th to June the 6th gives you the third phase of the year. From June the 7th to June the 28th gives you the fourth phase of the year. From July, I'm sorry, that was June the 7th to July the 28th. July the 29th to September 18th, that gives you the fifth phase. September the 19th to November the 9th gives you the sixth phase. And from November the 10th to December the 31st, it gives you the seventh and final phase of a calendar year. So there are seven phases. Each phase has approximately 52 days in it. And there are 52 weeks in a year. Why is this significant? Because things work in seasons. There seems to be when the opening of one phase moves toward the close and it brings up an opening for the next phase, a lot of spiritual activity begins to happen around those time periods. For an example, the first phase of the year is June I'm sorry, January the 2nd through February the 22nd. So that's the first phase. It closes on the 22nd, and then it opens on the 23rd. Then all of a sudden, the 23rd through the 15th is the second phase. When I was teaching this a few weeks ago, I just taught, amen, that a lot of the activities and wars, historical events, happen around the closing of one phase and the opening of another phase. What day did Russia choose to invade Ukraine? On February the 23rd, okay? If you just take a, a walk down history and look at these dates, you will see this pattern emerge over and over and over.
that there are times where things happen through these particular gates of time. When you look at um, the, the historical battle in the Middle East called the Six-Day War, the Six-Day War was a battle between Israel and its Arab nations. And Israel launched a preemptive strike because they felt that the Arabs were going to strike first. And so Israel launched a preemptive strike on June the 5th, which is significant in relation to the, the different phases because it's right at the close of the third phase going into the fourth phase. Now, I have a list of things here, I'm not going to call them all out, um, of significant events that have happened around those particular dates. And I think it's important to, to understand the, the, the historical battle in the World War II Pacific Theater between the United States and Japan, the Battle of Midway. There's an airport here in Chicago that's named after that battle, Midway. That began on June the 4th, and I believe it concluded on June the 6th. It was the battle that truly turned the tide of the war for the United States against Japan. There are time periods um, that are significant in the spirit. So when you begin to look at these things, even the Battle of Iwo Jima, 1945, what day did it take place on? What day did that flag go up? February the 23rd. Around the same, the same day that this battle between Russia and the Ukraine happens. So what you see happening here is you see a lot of things are put into play according to these cycles, these different cycles of the year. There is an assignment that evil spirits have, and they have a time period to carry it out. Now, what is biblically important about this is if you examine the book of Nehemiah, when Nehemiah had the responsibility of rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem, you know how many days it took him to do it? Yes, 52. In Nehemiah chapter 6 and verse 15, so the wall was finished in the 20 and 5th day of the month, in the month of Elu, in 50 and 2 days. Okay? So it took him 52 days to do this. So what am I saying here? There are different strategies that the enemy releases throughout the year. And you will begin to see patterns emerge in your life personally. You can see patterns emerge in ministries personally. And you see things happen on international stages around those time periods as well. Now, this, this, deserves, this, this teaching deserves at least two takes at this, all right? So I can't get everything out tonight. But there are times in your life where you will notice that things just start breaking down. And all of a sudden, you got to spend money on this. You have to spend money on that. And these things are planned spiritually. There are certain times in the year where you see wars begin to transpire at those time periods. There are certain times in the year where you see things that breed racial conflict begin to happen and they begin to emerge. It's interesting. So it's something to be said about the gates of time and the times that we live in where we must be prayerful through the different segments of the year. Because there is a strategy that's designed in this hour. And you can see now that the enemy has war on his mind. And this is the agenda for this particular segment of the year. 
He wants to see blood on the ground. He wants bloodshed, which means for a specific period of time, I personally will be dedicating a portion of my prayer life to praying against it. Because the way things are planned in the spirit, they sort of stack on top of each other. This serves as a foundation for that. That serves as a foundation for this and so and so on. But when we begin to pray about it, when we begin to seek the Lord and begin to ask the Lord to give us revelations and understanding concerning the things that we are seeing in our world and how to properly address and pray for those things, it becomes easier to hinder the enemy's ability to do what he wants to do. It's interesting that the world seems to be downgrading the pandemic. All right, finally. But then all of a sudden here comes a war. Where now all of a sudden everybody's attention has been shifted from, oh, you can take your mask off in Chicago starting Monday. <laughs> okay, to all of a sudden now there's a war going on. So this is a, a, a strategy by the enemy for the next few weeks where the saints have to not just be focused on what the enemy is doing, but you have to tune your ears to heaven to see what is God saying concerning this. What is he's asking of his people in this hour so that we are not missing the point of, of why we should be praying. So that we're not missing the mark concerning the things that God wants us to do in this hour. We must be wise enough to understand that God is calling us to something in this hour. So there is a need for us to have a plan, as I say, for the month of March. How do you plan to pray for the month of March? How do you plan to to map out strategically how you are going to advance spiritually. How are you going to seek the Lord spiritually? This is something that we need to be aware of. This is something that we need to plan to hold ourselves accountable to. What kind of fasting are you planning to do, Pastor, in this month of March? All right, because if you see the physical manifestation of a war on the land, that is an indication that a spiritual war has been ongoing and now what is in the spirit has materialized into the natural because those spiritual forces that are at work in Russia, they simply need an earthly vessel to work through and Vladimir Putin has nominated himself to be used by the devil, to make a long story short. There are things that are going on in the spirit, spiritual battles that are being loosed left and right. But the saints and the prepared people of the Lord must dedicate this moment into sincere prayer and fasting. Yes, it's not just turn on the TV and expect um, uh, that, you know, that everybody's going to live happily ever after. And the news media is going to announce it to you that everything has been settled and is in, you know, in, is, is, is all fine and dandy. No, this is the moment where we as the saints of God must buckle down and truly pray. I, I'm not meaning debate me or debate others. But really spend time in prayer. How much time, calculate how much time are you spending with God and how much time you're spending outside of God. And then ask yourself, what can I honestly commit to doing more? To draw closer unto the Lord. Because as things begin to heat up temperature wise in the spirit, those who are close to the Lord will be provided for by the Lord. Those who are lukewarm, we know the rule. <laughs> God says, I wish that you were either what? 
hot or cold, but because you're lukewarm, I will spit you out of my mouth. So in other words, this is not the season for lukewarmness. You must be on fire for God. You must understand that in this hour that a spiritual battle has started. And there is a requirement for you to know how to use the weapons of warfare that the Lord has given us. There's a need for a higher level of spiritual warfare in this hour. And I know less and less people talk about these subject matters. And that, that's okay for now. But the time will come when you will need to know, all right, how to engage in prayer, how to stand in warfare, how to break through a situation where you are under attack. And I'm not just talking about from, from on the job. Put yourself in the position of the people in Ukraine right now from a natural and spiritual perspective. They're burning churches in Ukraine. All right. Just imagine if if this was happening in the streets of Chicago right now, where there were soldiers on the outskirts in the suburbs with 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 uh, guns and tanks coming in to take over the city to reinsert their own philosophy of government upon the people within the city. Now, what kind of prayer life would you have then? It's the question I'm asking. What type of church sermon would you preach that Sunday prior to that happening? These are the things that we need to take into account now and begin to understand that there is a spiritual domino effect that if we don't pay attention to what's happening there, it can cascade into different regions of the world. Because I'm, I'm telling you, I'm saying, I'm going to say this, all right? In the year 2012, and I think my memory serves me correctly, because it was the year after my mother died. It was a Sunday morning before Valentine's Day, the year 2012. I had a strange dream. In this dream, I saw myself looking towards the sky. And I saw what looked like a comet, a falling star, it began to fall. And it left a long trail of light behind it. And I watched it as it flew from the northeast all the way over to the southwest, across the sky. And it went far, far, far out. And prior to me seeing this star, Thank you, Lord, because I'm. this is a dream that's over 10 years old. I remember seeing a moon in the sky. And I saw another moon. And another moon. And another moon. And it was like I saw a total of four moons. And then I saw this shooting star. When I awakened from the vision, I knew what it meant. I wasn't certain about the moons, whether it's four seasons of the moons or four nights, but in four moons, something is going to happen. In four moons, a fallen star was coming. That Friday morning, a comet came and it flew by the earth. And scientist NASA was expecting it to just pass by the earth and not bother anything. But all of a sudden, it made a sudden turn and it came into the Earth's atmosphere and created a loud explosion and it landed. And the meaning of the falling star was this was a fallen angel that was coming on the face of the Earth in four nights is what the vision meant. When that comet failed, do you know where it landed? In Russia. The affairs of the nation of Russia is being controlled by a fallen angel. Hear me and hear me well. This is why it's so important to pray now. This, this is not just some lower level devil that's at war here. This is a fallen angel controlling the affairs of a nation because 
Lord help me not to become too sarcastic because I just, I don't think highly of fallen angels. I think they're some of the dumbest beings in the face of, in all creation, you know. When you think about it, when all is said and done and God has judged man and angels, their minds will be more tormented in the lake of fire than man's because man would have never seen heaven. They saw it and then they will be tormented. And so they, they, they have this desire to be worshipped. They want to feel like God. They want, to, they want people to bow down to them. So it's kind of like they want to play God before they're judged by God. And then they're condemned by God and punished by God forever. So that they have this mindset of, of, of they, they will torment people to make themselves look powerful and bring about death and destruction. And this is what is happening with Russia. It's being controlled by a fallen angel. This is why it's so important to fast and pray for this month. Now, pray with me, because I know this, this is not a, um, an easy topic to discuss, nor is it an easy subject to explain to people. Um, how do you do battle with fallen angels? Well, listen, don't. What you do is you simply pray unto God that God would have mercy in Ukraine, that God would intervene, and let those who understand that level of warfare handle it, all right? Let God lead them, but you do what you can on the mountain of God. I'm almost out of time, but we're going to have to continue this discussion, saints, all right? And so I'm going to pray tonight. I'm going to pray for the nation of Ukraine. I'm going to pray that God's spirit would be upon all flesh. Father, we pray now in the name of Jesus. We thank you now for this moment and this hour of prayer. Lord, your word teaches us that the thief cometh but to kill, to steal, and to destroy. But you sent your son, Jesus, that we might have life and that we might have it more abundantly. Lord, your word teaches us that it is not your will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. So tonight we pray, Lord, that you would have mercy on the nation of Ukraine, that your mercy would be poured out as a shield of protection in that land that you would cause the forces of darkness, their language to be scattered and confounded as you did at the Tower of Babel. We pray that the communication systems of the enemy would be scattered and would be dismantled and destroyed in the name of Jesus. We pray that you would loose your angels to create a shield, a dome of protection over that nation. O oh God, in the name of Jesus, and that the language of the enemy would be confounded and become confusing to them themselves. We pray, O oh God, that you would send forth the arrow of deliverance as you did, O oh God, in days of old, that you and you alone would get the glory out of the things that will come out of this. And Father, we pray that you would compel your sons and your daughters, servants of God, to grab a hope to the horns of the altar and to continue to pray for your intervention, Father, in the name of Jesus. And as we pray now, we know now, O oh God, that you hear us and you will answer. And we are so grateful and thankful now. In the blessed and wonderful name of Jesus, we pray and we thank God. Amen and amen. Well, I'm just getting started. But I'm out of time. I'll see you again next week. And as I always say, it's time for us to stop playing and start praying. God bless you, and I'll see you next week.